How's it going everybody? Welcome to We Do Tech. So today we're going to take a look at a somewhat of a new a product that Coolmaster has been working on for quite a while now. The Control Pad, which is a new fully programmable 24 key keypad gamepad thing. Now this was designed to be more of a combination between productivity and gaming and it does actually have some really cool tech built in aside which we'll get into. However, if you want to get one of these for yourself, definitely go check out dreamwaretech.co.za where you can get a ton of other Cooler Monster products as well. Forget about a subpar customer service, Dreamware Tech delivers nationwide, keeps you updated on every step of the way, and something still very special is that everything comes inside eco-friendly packaging. So go check out dreamwaretech.co.za and get your new shiny Cooler Monster products today. Now, the Gatron version of the control pad is retailing for around $90 on Amazon, but unfortunately, we couldn't find any pricing for the Cherry MX version that we have here. But we suspect it's going to be around $20 more or so. Now, looking at the design of the control pad, it does look pretty modern overall with an anodized gunmetal aluminum atop a plate with a nice brushed finish and a pretty solid plastic base. At the top, there are two large aluminum scroll wheels that does have a finer texture to help with grip and also the four rectangular LED profile indicator lights. It does also come with a detachable magnetic wrist rest, which does have the overall same design as the rest of the keypad. And it does have a soft foam cushion covered by a black matte PU leather that does look and feel very comfortable. The build quality is pretty solid and shouldn't have any issues holding up in day-to-day -day use cases, even if you are putting up quite a sweat in your gaming sessions. Now flipping over, the first thing you'll notice is the cutout where you do have your Type-C cable connection and then also the small channel guide to route your cables neatly through towards the back. You also get two rubber non-slip pads in the bottom corner and two rubberized flip-out keyboard feet at the top. The flip-out feet does have quite large pads on the back just to make sure that it doesn't go anywhere if you are in a heat of a battle when moving around on your desk. Now the wrist race also has a four non-slip pads in each of the corners to help keep that in place as well. Now the gamepad uses the aimpad technology Technology, which pretty much makes the standard Cherry or Gatron switches into a more of a trigger or a thumbstick that you actually get on a controller instead of the keys being either on or off when pressing it down it actually becomes a pressure sensitive and picks up how far the key has moved which means that pushing the button harder when you're losing might actually make a difference now to make your character move faster around. Now the reason these switches make the control pad special is that you actually can reprogram all of the keys to do almost anything you really want. There's way more options than you get on a standard mechanical switch. You can set all of them up to work together and imitate a thumbstick on a controller or you can program the keys individually to do multiple of actions depending on how hard you actually press down on the key. Now the software can be used to reprogram again all 24 of these switches to do almost anything you want. You can record custom macros, assign a different keyboard and a mouse inputs to control things like your media playback or your RGB profiles. And even you can switch between 24 customizable profiles on the fly. It can even be used as a mouse if you're kind of too lazy to stand up and go pick up a mouse to do something with. So you do have that option if you're lazy, <laughs> something like I am. Now, there are also two large scroll wheels that can be completely reprogrammed again. You can adjust a volume, scroll through lighting effects, change the LEDs, a brightness, and just a whole lot of more. They are textured again to help with a grip and have a completely smooth continuous rotation 
but won't grow further than you really want them to. Now, having a 24 customizable profiles is a nice feature, especially if you do use a lot of macros and shortcuts for specific games or software, but it can get a bit difficult to keep track of everything. Now, luckily, Cooler Master thought that through, however, you can set up the control pad to open other applications and automatically switch to the profile that you assigned to that program or a game. It even comes with a few preset profiles for Adobe, like Photoshop, Illustrator, and Premiere, which definitely made editing that much more simpler on the device, especially if you do work on a laptop. It actually works really nice there. Now, the control pad does come with a set of decent quality black numbered keycaps made out of what feels like mostly ABS plastic. But Coolmaster have also released a couple sets of custom keycaps designed to help you again find what each key does for your shortcuts, especially if you do have Adobe where it works nicely for all that. But they do also have some sets for FPS games and also a black set if you do want to customize them somewhat to your liking. Now as for the lighting, the control pad does have 13 customizable RGB effects, which can be fine tuned or turned off completely if you just wanted to have your RGB not on. But I must say that it was actually very useful in this case by the color coding certain groups of shortcuts. It made it a lot easier to find what key actually does what. Even though the RGB isn't the brightest, it does add a nice backlight, which does make it a lot easier to fit into a more of a professional workplace, even if you just want to keep it on white. Now, a nice feature is that it's also a plug in a place, so your PC will automatically pick up what profiles and everything is selected on the keyboard. Also, if you do launch a game that does support the control pad, it will automatically pick that up and adjust the controls to show that the control pad is actually a controller. Now then as for gaming, I have to say it was actually a pretty uh, nice experience in most of the games, uh, but I think that because of these switches, they are more designed for racing games or FPS games, especially if you want to get uh, the most out of the uh, gamepad uh, technology. Now the analog input are made for a pretty smooth experience, especially when you're steering a car in a game. And when I wasn't using it as my main input device, I was using it to control my background of music and spam emotes uh, when we were streaming. Now, one thing that I did find a little bit confusing was that with the top row in the pre-programmed WASD layout, where the keys didn't really match up with the input. So that was a little confusing uh, there, where one, two, three, four was actually two, three, four, five on the control pad so that was a bit different now honestly where i really felt it helped out was with my productivity work the pre-programmed premiere layout was actually pretty good and when we tweaked it a bit more after i replaced uh, some of the shortcuts that we didn't uh, use it actually made editing a lot uh, quicker all of those milliseconds are wasted by pressing on multiple keys or making sure you press everything on the same time and all of that it adds up where this is actually just a single button and it does make it a lot quicker to do different functions. So it actually helped out a lot. But now the main question is, would I recommend it? And honestly, it just kind of depends on your situation. I would recommend it if you are a content creator. People who work with Adobe Suite on a daily basis and want to add something to their setup that can help with streamlining their creative process or just for gamers who want to free up some valuable desk space and replace their ginormous keyboard with something quite a bit smaller, even than a 60% a keyboard. It just takes up too much space. So you do have that if you wanted to just make it as small and compact as possible. Now, of course, I would still recommend you keeping your keyboard in arm's reach in case you actually need to Google something because there's not enough keys to actually type in like full, full sentences. Now, the only problem that the control bed actually has is that because there's 24 keys and you have so many different profiles and so many use cases for it, it's just going to be a bit of a 
dilemma or battle to remember everything. Like if you, for example, on the Elgato control, uh, Stream Next, it does have uh, pictures on it, but it doesn't really have the mechanical switches. So it wouldn't say it really, you can game on it. Whereas this one does have the switches that you can game on, but you'll have to try and remember everything. The only other option is to actually get keycaps for each and every shortcut that you plan to make or or if you just have a really good memory. That's the only thing. But yeah, that's pretty much it for our review of the control pad from Cool Monster. Big thanks to Cool Monsters of Africa for sending it over for a review. If you want to get it for yourself, definitely check out the links in the video description. Also, if you guys enjoyed this review, please like, share, subscribe, and comment like always. And I'll check all of you next time. Cheers, guys.